Today, we're looking at Linux alternatives to Adobe programs. There are usually multiple good Linux alternatives to a given program. We will be covering the ones we think are the best. Also, there are several proprietary Linux alternatives, but we will only be covering free and open source software. The first Adobe program we are covering is Acrobat, a program for viewing and editing PDFs. The best alternative to Acrobat on Linux would be LibreOffice Draw, which lets you view and edit PDFs for completely free. This is one program part of the popular LibreOffice suite. The UI looks decent, but isn't the simplest, as LibreOffice Draw is also a vector graphics editor, so it has many options, but it's pretty easy to use for PDF creation, viewing, and editing, and gets the job done. There are a few quirks, for example, each line of text is its own text box when you first open a PDF, but it's not a deal breaker, although just a bit strange, and you can resize each individual text box if need be. It does kind of make sense though, considering LibreOffice Draw is after all primarily made for vector graphics editing. Next is Adobe's flagship product, Photoshop. While there is no other program that can fully replace Photoshop and all of its capabilities, the closest program is GIMP, which is a very capable raster graphics and photo manipulation program that can replace Photoshop for most people, and is very widely used as a free alternative. Unfortunately though, GIMP doesn't have all the features that Photoshop does, like editing raw photos, editing in CMYK color, non-destructive editing, and some more advanced tools, but GIMP 3 is coming out soon with a major redesign and new tools, non-destructive editing, more supported file formats, and much more. And many features are planned after GIMP 3 is released, one of which being proper CMYK support, which is currently work in progress. Regarding GIMP's UI, it's currently alright looking, but unintuitive, and definitely has a learning curve compared to Photoshop. However, GIMP 3 will feature a newer and hopefully more intuitive user interface. Also, why is there a pepper in here? What the- But while the UI isn't great at the moment, GIMP is still a great, capable program. Next is Premiere Pro, Adobe's popular video editor. A full alternative would be DaVinci Resolve, but it is proprietary, so the best free and open source option is Caden Live, a powerful, fully featured video editor that's part of the KDE suite. The user interface is decent looking and intuitive, and when I edit videos in Caden Live, it is really stable. In the rare event that it does crash, it does a great job of recovering your work so you don't have to completely start over. Caden Live is definitely a great starting point for newbies who want to get into video editing with its user-friendly UI, but also has advanced features for professionals, which is the case with the more professional apps in the KDE suite in general. As for features, Premiere Pro does have more advanced and professional features, but Caden Live may still work perfectly for you. If it doesn't though, there is always DaVinci Resolve as well. Blender also offers a powerful video editor, but it's mainly for experts and is not very user-friendly. Next is Illustrator, the vector graphics editor. The best alternative is Inkscape. The user interface is cleaner and more user-friendly than Illustrator, and Illustrator does come with a few more tools, but features are pretty identical. But of course, Illustrator does have the advantage of being connected to Adobe's Creative Cloud, which is convenient for working with fonts using Adobe Fonts and working seamlessly with other Adobe apps like Photoshop. Also, Illustrator is better suited for heavier and more professional projects, although Inkscape works fine for those as well. For file formats, Inkscape supports SVG, which is the default, PDF, EPS, AI, CDR, VSD, and many more. Next is After Effects, the VFX and Motion Graphics program. The best alternative is Natron, a direct, fully featured alternative. Natron uses a node-based workflow as opposed to After Effects layer-based workflow, so it is a different experience in that regard and may take some getting used to. The overall interface definitely looks on the older side, but it works. It is fairly user-friendly and looks very similar to Nuke, another popular VFX program, so if you're coming from Nuke, it should be a very easy transition. Blender also offers powerful motion graphics and VFX. Next is Lightroom, the simple photo editing software. 
The best alternative in this case is Darktable. Darktable has a nice looking and very easy to use interface similar to Lightroom. Both are in general very similar feature wise as well. It lets you quickly and easily make color edits to photos and you may notice two tabs at the top right, Light Table and Dark Room. Light Table is for importing and managing your photos, while Dark Room is for editing and exporting them. Next is InDesign, a desktop publishing program. The best alternative is Scribus. Scribus has a pretty simple UI, but it definitely looks very old and outdated, and in general, pretty bad. Fortunately, you can easily change the theme in the settings to make it look more modern. Its layout is also very different from InDesign, so it may take some time to learn. Unfortunately, InDesign is easier to use and more robust, but Scribus works for most use cases. Next is Animate, which is, well, 2D animation software. The best alternative is OpenTunes. OpenTunes is a powerful, fully featured animation suite that also has a pretty nice and modern UI. It can be used for simple, smaller animations or more complex animations with its suite of tools and is a great direct alternative to Adobe Animate. And Blender, while mainly known for its 3D animation and sculpting, also offers great 2D animation capabilities. Next is Substance 3D, a 3D software suite including several programs such as Modeler for 3D models, Sampler for turning real-life objects into 3D assets, Designer for creating 3D materials with a node-based workflow, Painter for creating 3D textures, Stager for rendering realistic scenes, and Assets which gives you access to tons of 3D assets. The clear alternative is, of course, Blender the fully featured behemoth of a software suite, including 3D modeling, rigging, sculpting, compositing, simulation, and rendering, 3D and 2D animation, motion graphics and VFX, and video editing. And no, it's not spread across different programs. All of this is included in one enormous app. Blender has all the features you could ever possibly want and is a professional's dream, while also being fairly user-friendly for some of its functions. Blender is truly an amazing software and a representation of how great open source software can truly be. Also, it is to be noted that Blender is the industry standard for anything 3D. Next is Audition, the digital audio workstation. The best alternatives are Audacity and Z-Rhythm. If you want a simple alternative with most of the features, then Audacity is for you. Audacity is a very popular audio workstation that has a very old looking interface, but it's reliable and has a lot of support online. However, if you want something more professional, I recommend Z-Rhythm, a beautiful, fully featured and highly automated digital audio workstation that is very easy to use and intuitive. It offers powerful mixing capabilities, audio plugins, automatic backups, and more. Next is InCopy, a professional word processor. To be honest, I didn't even know Adobe had a word processor, but the best alternative is of course the LibreOffice Suite. LibreOffice is a powerful and in the Linux world the most popular Office Suite that offers six programs. Writer for documents, Calc for spreadsheets, Impress for presentations, Base for databases, Draw for vector graphics, and PDFs which we covered earlier, and Math for formulas. However, as far as I know, LibreOffice does not support InCopy's ICML file format. Instead, it uses the open document file formats, so ODT for documents, ODS for spreadsheets, ODP for presentations, ODB for databases, ODG for vector graphics, and ODF for formulas. LibreOffice's UI is decent looking and easy to use. And finally is Fresco, a digital painting program. The best alternative is Krita, a painting program that's part of the powerful KDE suite like Caden Live. It has a decent, featureful UI and offers tons of brushes, vectors, and features. It even has 2D animation. 
Some features include drawing assistance, layer management, a select and transform tool to work on a specific portion of your painting, full color management, PSD file support, and more. Let me know if I missed anything and I'll make a part two. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.